Welcome. Hello. Hey, how are you? I'm very good. Nice to see you too. Please have a seat. Hey, how's it going everybody? My name is Justin, aka Justin the Mind, and welcome to episode three of the GameFi Chat, where we talk with builders in the GameFi space. Today we have a very special guest today, uh, which is Mai. Mai is actually a researcher at Kairos Ventures here in Vietnam, and she's also the co-founder of the Anti-Anti NFT Club. How are you doing today, Mai? I'm doing good. How are awesome. you? I'm doing great. Happy to have you here. I always love your style, by the way. You're always dressed so nice. Um, before we get into our chat today, I want to play like a fun little game with you. Uh, All right. We've been doing this with our guests, guests lately, and it's quite a little challenge, but it's called the eight second game. So I'm going to ask you eight questions and you're going to have eight seconds to answer each question. And if you can finish this difficult puzzle before we finish the eighth question, you will have a nice 500k BND reward that you can uh, enjoy over the weekend. All right, okay. does that sound good? Uh, All right, absolutely. cool. So we're gonna go fast once we get started. So you can start now. Are you more the type to be FOMO or more the type to be JOMO? FOMO, definitely. Name five GameFi NFT projects. Um, five uh, X Infinity, uh, Illuvium. Um, uh, pay a C, um... All right, next question. How many NFTs do you own right now? Uh, about six NFTs at the moment. Okay, keep going with your puzzle, keep going with your puzzle. Uh, what is the first NFT you own? Um, Samurai, Avex Samurai on Avalanche. Okay, what is the most expensive NFT you ever bought? How uh, much was it? My current avatar is about uh, 200 bucks. Okay. Are you a risk taker or risk averse? Risk averse, oh my gosh. Easy. List out three reasons that will make you buy an NFT. Hype community, beautiful artworks, and um, great developers, great builders, um, innovation. What would you do one day if NFT or GameFi did not exist anymore? I'll be the second uh, Satoshi to uh, revive the blockchain. Okay, let's go. All right, that's the end of the game, Mai. You got about uh, halfway there. You got about halfway there. It, yeah. look, it looked good, but we'll, we'll, we'll try it again another time. Um, all right, Mai, so that's the end of uh, the game. Now we're going to go ahead and get into some of the questions. Okay. Okay, Mai, so why don't you tell us a little bit about your journey into NFTs? How did you get into the NFT space and working for Kairos Ventures? Okay, so uh, thank you, Justin, for the question. Um, I first heard about NFTs in a blockchain conference in Vietnam, but I didn't care much. Okay. I, I knew about the hype of NFT uh, previously, but um, it, it, it looked so scammy for me. Mm -hmm. um, but later, with the rise of Basie and Punks, I, I cannot ignore it anymore. And plus, because you know the, the crypto market, they becomes more um, correlate with the macro factors. Yes. So I think NFTs will be a good niche for me to jump in and um, have a chance to grow faster there. Yeah, definitely. I can I can agree. I actually didn't pay much attention to NFTs until Axie Infinity. And the reason why Axie Infinity caught my eyes because I thought it was so cool that the blockchain was merging with games. That was something I hadn't seen in the NFT space prior. Um, so tell me a little bit about, you are the co-founder of Anti-Anti uh, NFT. So what are you guys building with Anti-Anti NFTs? Yeah, so uh, we're, we're building a community for, uh, about NFTs in Vietnam. I think we're one of the biggest communities at the moment. So um, we're, we're not just um, shilling projects and and pumping and dumping. No, we're, we're not just doing that. We're, 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 what we want to do is um, providing uh, our community members with knowledge and skills and also experience when trading entities. Very yeah, cool. and I think um, one of the, the best thing we can offer them is the opportunity to uh, exchange knowledge, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, everybody is, 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 treating, is being treated fairly and it, it, it was very fun. 
Yeah. Uh, we host many uh, mini games, and I think people did enjoy it. Oh, that's awesome. So you guys are more of like a kind of like an alpha group, right? You really uh, build your community based off of you guys uh, analyzing and assessing projects and then you guys kind of jump into good projects as a community. Is, is that right? Yes. Yeah, that's, right. that's really that's really awesome and, and so necessary in the NFT space, right? Because we have so many uh, people that are just trying to build communities up for a quick pump and dump type of project and that might make money in the in the short term but it doesn't build anything sustainable so i love that you guys are really focused more on bringing that that quality to the community um what are some of the obstacles that you feel hinder right now the growth of of nfts in the market at the moment i think that the three biggest pain points at the moment is the cumbersome ui ux mm. you know we have to um have the tokens and you have to pay the gas fees and also the the frauds and scams sometimes um we are scammed too like we do not know like the community looks so hype everything looks so real but yeah, yeah it, it turns out not as we expected but it's part of the journey and the third one is um regulation mm -hmm. um to i think that to reach mass adoption um people need to see a clear picture of um how the assets they hold um, are being treated under the uh, regulation. Yeah. yeah, yeah, very, very true. So, uh, what do you think that the the space needs at the moment outside of regulation? Like uh, uh, you mentioned first, like UX UI. H how do you think that uh, projects can kind of simplify that process for the normal user? Do you have any ideas on that? Um, I think that like we have many solutions for that at the moment. We have um, Meta Transactions Relayer which means you know, we have a relayer which will pay the transaction fees mm -hmm. for our new users. Mm -hmm. Some projects have adopted that. Um, or we can make things centralized a bit. I know that um, decentralization and centralization is like, um, like a, 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 a see strong contradiction in yes. the crypto space. It's like a clash. Yeah, but uh, sometimes I think we we, we just need to sacrifice a little bit of uh, decentralization to make things more efficient. I agree. Yeah, you know, there's always that conversation going around, but when you look at the masses and the reality with privacy policies and things of that nature, there's, there's a niche group of people that truly hold strong to the idea that everything needs to be decentralized. I think a lot of the world and the marketplace would be okay with uh, centralized processes that are smoother and easier on the user experience. Couldn't agree more there. Um, NFTs are said to be highly speculative at the moment. How do you see the potential of the technology in real life? Okay, so I always believe that NFT uh, is a bridge between crypto and um, the real uh, product market where we're living at the moment. Uh, because like you see, um, NFT allows for the tokenization of real life assets, um, of uh, real life events, uh, membership access, etc. And um, I know that we see a lot of speculation in the, in the NFT space at the moment. Like people flip NFTs, um, buy and sell things, pump and dump. Yes. But um, I think that we should forget that uh, NFT projects are in their very early stages at the moment. Like mm -hmm. things are still uh, on the roadmap. Um, whether they are um, realized, they are um, executed, uh, we're not sure. That that means like they, they, they may do it or they may not. It's yeah. a soft drop. But um, I think once they can um, execute the goals they stated on the roadmap, mm -hmm. the values of NFTs will come not just in monetary but also mental values, right? Because um, I, I, I see a lot of uh, similarity between the NFT market and the um, luxury uh, market. So do, do you see the um, luxury resale market a zero-sum game? No. Yeah. Yeah. I think brand brand is definitely something that can uh, affect the market in a positive way. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, according to a, a survey by McKinsey, mm. uh, people buy secondhand uh, luxury goods not just because they are cheaper, but because they are rare and exclusive, and right. and and that's what NFTs offer us at the moment. 
Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. I love that um, brands are starting to come enter into the space. And I think it, it brings more of that uh, user experience where they start to look at the NFT as not just uh, necessarily an asset, but maybe something that they really are going to hold uh, just purely for the flex or purely because they, they, they love the brand itself. Yeah. And uh, that, that's going to be really healthy actually for the marketplace because it, it takes away the idea that the only purpose of an NFT is to flip at some point for some, some profit. That's right. Uh, which, which industries will see the most adoption of NFTs, do you think? I think um, at the moment and even in the future, we see a lot of fashion brands jumping into the NFT For space. Sure, yeah. yeah, because like as we see, as, in, as we mentioned about the, the branding um, effect, um, how NFTs can assist brands in um, reaching more people and I think NFTs allow for one important thing is it en enables a smoother uh, process of reselling goods yeah yeah especially as I say the the, the luxury resale markets is um, on search at the moment mm -hmm. and NFTs will allow for that yeah, yeah. I, I also personally believe like music is going to be one of the the biggest spaces and I'm sure a lot of people agree there uh, we still haven't quite seen it um, take off at, at the same level as the, the PFPs and the art NFTs, but I think it's definitely only a matter of time, especially as we get more user adoption in that space. It also seems very healthy for the space as well, because if people are buying music NFTs from their favorite artists, again, it's kind of taking away that idea that the only purpose of this NFT is to flip, but rather you want to own a piece of this person's music library or you want to feel a part of the journey of their their music career so i also really am looking forward to that space growing more and i also believe it'll be really healthy and one of the fastest growing industries yeah i i agree with you there but there's a point to be made is that um the reason why some 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 um, famous artists um, are not ready to jump into the music energy market because um, there will be hype, there will be speculations. So maybe their real fans may not get a chance to buy the NFTs, but those who are not their fans, well, you know, they have bots, they yeah. have tools, they have experience in the space, they will buy out all the NFTs and raise the price, or the, the price floor, yeah. which is very unfair for uh, their fans. Their real fans. Yeah. yeah, you make a great point. It'll definitely have to be a uh, a great job by their marketing team to somehow pinpoint the real fans and give them the opportunity first in some sense but also in a way that's fair to the marketplace so it's yeah it's kind of a push and a pull but if, if a marketing team can figure that out there's definitely some big opportunity and I think uh, a fun experience for the fans to kind of be along for the ride. Uh, what have you gained from the NFT market would you say? I would say the biggest thing I gained from this space is friends um, because I'm, I'm more like an introvert, you know. I, I didn't have so many friends in the past, but when I joined this space, I and I talked to people like we're 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 we're, we're, we're like close friends for um, a long time ago. We yeah. we share things to uh, um, each other, and then the second thing is um, knowledge. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't just read about projects; I also read about technology. Yeah and how can they help uh, project founders innovate their uh, products and, then, and and I myself find it quite fascinating to, to me um, um, and the third thing I, I, I gain from uh, this market is uh, the, 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 the ability to um, you know just to, to, to stay away from the FOMO you mm -hmm. know you have to stay calm mm -hmm. um, sometimes you have to um, buy before the news mm -hmm. um, so it's like managing your emotions in a way, right? You're yes, like learning to better manage your emotions. Yeah. I'm, I'm still learning that sometimes I fail. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, very true. I think uh, some traders like in the traditional markets would also uh, say, I would read about that actually. Uh, I was very focused in, in trading at one point and, and something I heard from very developed traders was like, 
this, uh, this business will really help you learn to manage emotions at a better level because you will understand when you are making decisions based out of emotion versus based out of you know, what you know to be the right move for you to make. So that's really interesting. And I love that you say friends because I, I definitely feel I've, uh, my, my friend circle has grown tremendously with these new communities that we hop in and out of um, now with, with the NFT space. So that's, that's great. And, uh, and technology as well. That's really cool because I never considered myself a tech person, but it's true. Once you get into NFTs, you realize, well, this is really the tech space, right? Like the NFTs and, and the blockchain, it's, it's all the tech that's underneath this layer that, that everyone is building on top of. So now you need to go learn about this layer. So it's really cool. It's a great opportunity for people, like even for people like myself that don't consider themselves like a tech person to actually get into an interesting space and learning about more tech be the byproduct of that. So that's awesome. All right, cool, Mai. Thank you so much for answering those questions. We're gonna finish with one more fun little game. And this one is a little, not a little bit, this one's a lot easier. You don't have to solve a puzzle while you're doing it. Um, so this one is called underrated or overrated. And I'm gonna ask you a question and I just want you to simply tell me why you think that currently, it doesn't mean forever, just currently you think this thing is either underrated or overrated and just a short little piece why you think so. Okay. All right. Uh, so first question is, is the idea of the metaverse currently underrated or overrated? Um, I think it's overrated. Overrated, okay. Can why, I why do you why? think so? Yeah, absolutely, please do. So, um, I, I, I myself um, write a, an, an article about why we need metaverse, mm. but uh, when I look at metaverse projects at the moment, I see somebody just just jumps on the bandwagon and, and they, they don't realize oh why do they need to build this metaverse? What is it for? What what is the, the difference they, 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 they made and is that difference strong enough to pull users from other platforms to their platforms? Mm -hmm. I agree that we need metaverse. Metaverse brings a lot of things uh, to watch to, to, to us. But that doesn't mean that um, we should we should uh, build different metaverses. Mm. I, I I care about okay we have um, a few metaverses, and then people start building things on those metaverses. Yeah. 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 It seems like uh, if it's spread out too much, none of them can ever really fully thrive a, yeah. as a user base, right? Yeah. That is quite tough. That's a very interesting perspective. And maybe we can even like link down below the article you wrote that that might be interesting for people to, to take a look at. All right, awesome. Uh, are one of one NFTs underrated or overrated? I think it's um, underrated. Underrated, okay. And can you tell me why, why you think so? I think it's, it's always special to own something that you're the only one to have it. Mm. Um, like, um, it's exclusive. Agreed. That that, yeah. that feeling. I love that feeling. Um, I, I love being unique when yeah. I was small. So um, I think that they deserve more hype. Mm. But um, at the same time, they may grow too expensive that people start ignoring it because they cannot afford it. Yeah, it's true. There's there's definitely a thin line there. But I, I love that the NFT space has brought one of one art more to the surface now now that we're paying attention to actual digital art in a different way so it's really cool to see that are blue chip nft projects underrated or overrated i think that they are um overrated currently overrated currently okay. overrated uh because what i see they sell is uh sometimes they just they, they just sell you expectation mm. um like they keep uh, selling the news, mm -hmm. um, but um, maybe they're doing something. I don't know. Maybe we will see something from them uh, in the future. Yeah. Uh, but and and I look forward to that. Yeah, definitely. So my thinks that there's still some work to be done for the blue chips. I I agree again there. I, I also would like to see something more than just uh, some game projects being built and uh, a little bit of IP being used. Those things are really cool and really exciting. But for the price point where some of these blue chips are currently at, I would also like to see some more utility uh, added. Is AI created NFT art underrated or overrated? 
underrated. Underrated. Yeah. Okay. I because I think that、um, visual artists they think that AI is just you know copy things from、um, the things they've learned、yeah. and create a, a new piece of art. But I myself,、uh, when I discover more about the AI arts, I think that. Visual artists and AI artists can co-live. They like、um, visual artists can utilize、uh, AI artists to to enhance their process of、uh, making artworks. Yes. Yeah, like when when they、uh, um, um, scratching things. Like、uh, if you have an AI tool,、mm -hmm. it you will set up the outline for your、um, arts more easily. Yeah, yeah, that's that's actually a very cool way to look at it. Almost like a collaborative tool. In a sense,、yeah. to like give you、uh, maybe just a direction, and then you can build off of that. Yeah, That's、right. actually a really cool point. I, I haven't actually quite considered. And、uh, as a as as a person that enjoys music and also creating music from time to time, I also think about it like that could be a great way to give you a concept、uh, for a song. Even you can type in like some different ideas of concepts, and then it can put together something that could like spark something super creative. So. That's a really great point. I like that a lot.、Um, all right, final question is、uh, the degen minting culture, and this is a good question for you because you're you're the co-founder of Anti Anti NFT, so I'm sure you guys have quite a few degens in your community. So, is the degen minting culture underrated or overrated?、Um, I think it's、um, underrated. Underrated. Because、uh, sometimes, for especially for NFT projects. You don't really know、um, why. Why? Why is it hype? Why? Why? What are the the factors between、uh, behind the、um, NFT projects? So just you know, just spread it out.、Yeah. Um, and if you don't have enough、uh, financial capital to you know spread out too much、uh, NFT projects, you can try that out with your friends.、Mm. That's what I usually do. Yes. Yes. So 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 we、um, have a, a mutual funds. I would say. And then we spread it out、uh, NFT projects, so、uh, the risk will be shared, and you will um, have um, more exposure to um, um, upside projects.、Mm. Mm. Yeah, DJ minting. We gave it a like really creative name in this time, but really it's just like、uh, high risk investing, which people are doing in the you know in the in the outside world, outside of NFTs, all the time. You know, taking a shot on a project without really knowing. Uh, if it has legs to to go really far, but、um, that's also the beauty of it is if you take a shot early, you might be a, a a big winner on the back end if the project does well. So I also love degen minting culture. Culture. I'm a degen myself. I like to jump into some projects and、uh, just be along for the ride. And it's all it's all about you know managing your capital correctly, not going too crazy on on any one mint. And and I think、uh, it's actually like healthy for the space and and fun for the space. So I love that you said、uh, under. Rated on that. All right, Mai. So that's that's it for my questions. Thank you so much for joining us on the episode today.、Um, really look forward to seeing what you continue to do with Anti Anti NFTs. I'm in the group, so I will be participating along with you guys as well going forward. And、uh, hopefully, we can catch up with you again on a future episode. Yeah. Thank yeah. All right. Thank you so, thank you so much. much. All right. Take care, guys. Peace. Thank you for watching the video. And now we have a quiz question for you. According to Mai. Which industries will see the most adoption of NFTs? Please answer by commenting right below the video with the syntax "your answer underscore your Discord username underscore a lucky number from one to ninety nine." A gift of ten BUSD will be given to one person who has the correct answer and has a lucky number close to the number that Ancient Eight has chosen. Responses will be recorded within one day from when this video airs, and results will be announced in Ancient Eight's next video. Good luck. Thank、you